When most people think of Africa, they think of primitive drums, or wild, colorful dancers, or swamplands and deep, threatening jungles, or lots of wild animals. All things are still there, but today the face of Africa is quickly changing. All of Africa is steadily on the move. By studying one country, we may understand how all of Africa is developing. This, then, is the story. Nigeria is surrounded by Dahomey, Niger, Chad, Cameroon, and the Atlantic Ocean. Nigeria is twice the size of California. The statue in front of Nigeria's House of Parliament is that of Queen Elizabeth, Nigeria's former ruler. Great Britain granted Nigeria her sovereign independence in 1960. Independence Hall marks the date in 1963 when she became a republic. Nigeria's flag is green for her great agricultural wealth and white for unity and peace. The first president of the new federal republic was Dr. Nandi Azikiwe. Lagos is the capital of Nigeria. Nigeria has many new impressive government buildings. She represents an experiment in democracy which all the world is watching. The Supreme Court and the Constitution it upholds have been influenced by American thought and British tradition. On the National Hall at Lagos is the nation's coat of arms. State House in Kaduna, the capital of the North, is another impressive official building. This is the old palace of the Oba, or traditional king of Lagos who stands with his prime minister. These tribal chiefs play important roles in the government. Here are several of the king's ceremonial crowns. Nigeria is divided into four regions, the west, midwest, east, and north. Nigeria is named after its giant river, the Niger. Another major river is the Benue. The Federal Republic has many important major cities. These are strategically spread throughout the nation. Kano in the far dry north is an ancient city. It is an important trade and transportation center. Here the old and the new stand in interesting and colorful contrast. The great mosque at Kano serves those of Muslim faith, the principal religion of Nigeria. However, Christianity, second in numbers of followers, has made deep inroads. The Hausa people, found in the northern region, are one of five major ethnic groups in Nigeria. Here is a typical Hausa family. Many American Negroes are descendants of the inhabitants of Nigeria. Nigerians have a wonderful sense of humor and have closely knit families. The houses are skilled craftsmen. Weaving is a major talent. The crafts and arts are ways that the Africans have of expressing their feelings, their values, and attitudes. Many house of people are also herders, and many are farmers. The Fulanis, mostly Muslims, are a second major ethnic group. They live mainly in the northern region. Pounding grain for the women is a daily chore. The Fulanis are herders and nomads. This is a Fulani chief with a necklace of charms. This Fulani village is typical of thousands of such villages throughout Africa. In sharp contrast are the modern cities. Ibadan, the capital of the western region, is the largest city in Nigeria. It is busy and crowded, with both old and many new modern buildings. Coco House is the home of Nigeria's Coco Marketing Board. Coco is one of Nigeria's major export crops. The Kingsway department store is one of a chain. Building projects to keep pace with a growing economy are everywhere. The University of Ibadan is considered to be the oldest and the best. 
students are in Western and African garb. These are Yoruba women, members of the third major ethnic group. Yorubas, who are city dwellers, live mainly in the southwestern region. They are a Muslim and Christian mixture. This is a Yoruba man. Benin, in the Midwest region, is its capital. There is at least one government hospital in each of the four regions. City workers of Benin, dressed in neat Western garb and traditional robes, are proud of their city, which was the center of an ancient civilization. Through its churches, schools, clinics, and missionaries, Christianity has made important inroads in Nigeria. An elephant tusk monument is the gateway to Inugu, another major city and the capital of the eastern region. Radio and television towers and buildings mark its progress. Its hotels are equally modern. In Inugu, girls direct the traffic. This girl is a member of the Igbo group, Igbos are mainly Christian, independent, and energetic. Port Harcourt in the south is the second largest port in Nigeria. Needed imports being unloaded are steel, iron, machinery, vehicles, and cotton goods. On the outskirts of this crowded city are many large office buildings, another Kingsway department store, and typical modest city apartments. Lagos, the capital, has the largest port. Its natural harbor is busy and unique. There are many beaches in Nigeria. Tinubu Square, in the heart of Lagos, with its busy traffic, modern buildings, and new skyline, reflects the spirit of a forward-looking Nigeria. Muslim worshipers throughout the nation bow towards Mecca and say their prayers. Nigeria grows sufficient food for its needs. One of its abundant products is peanuts, or ground nuts. Northern Nigeria is the biggest producer of peanuts in the world. There are hundreds of peanut pyramids, such as this one, awaiting shipment. Nigeria is primarily agricultural. An estimated 80% of the total male population is engaged in it. Her vegetables and fruits are many, such as peppers, oranges, bananas, cassavas, one of Africa's main staple foods, yams. Sugarcane is another abundant crop. Major exports of considerable value include cotton and cocoa from plantations such as this. These are cocoa pods and cocoa beans. Palm trees, abundant throughout the East, supply another important product and export, palm oil. Palm nuts are one of Nigeria's main crops. There is a wide variety of crops throughout the nation. A palm oil refinery produces many barrels of oil for soap, for cooking. Cattle, millions of them, form a considerable part of the nation's economy. Fishing along the Atlantic sea coast and inland rivers is still relatively underdeveloped. However, it is fairly extensive and an important source of food. In the tropical rainforests of the Midwestern regions are groves of valuable commercial timber, which provide another source of income, both internally and as an export. Rubber plantations are numerous. The sap, the latex, is being collected from these trees. Dry northern Nigeria is the center of the tin mining industry. Gold and columbite deposits also contribute to the country's natural wealth. Coal mining industries located in eastern Nigeria also aid in our economic development. The oil refinery outside of Port Harcourt is a major international project. A power plant in Lagos supplies electricity for industrial and domestic consumption around Lagos and other parts of western Nigeria. 
Industrial expansion is quite evident. Flour mills, cement plants, textile mills. Textiles have emerged as one of the important industries that greatly contribute to Nigeria's economic independence. Dyes, sometimes in open vats, give fabrics rich and vivid hues. These colorful fabrics, made from Nigeria's own cotton, are sold in the many open marketplaces. Clothes and other products of Nigeria's numerous local industries find ready markets and buyers within the country. Many exports stored in huge warehouses are loaded onto ships. Principal exports include tin ore, hides and skins, rubber, and crude petroleum. The transportation story begins with the most common way people carry things throughout Africa. Small boats transport materials along many rivers and streams. Bicycles are the most popular mode of transportation, along with automobiles. Roads have been carved out of jungle forests. Modern tractors are used in road construction projects. A completed broad highway leads to the giant Great Niger Bridge, which connects the eastern and midwestern regions. Loaded cars in busy freight yards carry materials between major cities and to Port Harcourt and Lagos. People and cars unload from one of the numerous ferry boats that operate between principal towns on the rivers Niger and Benue. Passenger and cargo services use craft that vary from modern powered barges to paddle steamers to ocean liners. There are two international airports, Lagos in the south and Kano in the north. Planes speed up Nigeria's international trade, commerce and contact. Radio and television antennas jut into the sky from several large radio broadcasting buildings that have replaced tangled jungle areas. In communication, as shown by these figures, Africa's talking drum has given way to modern methods. Radio towers and stations have given a new voice to Nigeria, which, however, is largely government controlled. People are eager for education such as provided at this university in Zaria, where impressive developments are taking place. Nigerians love their sports. This stadium serves 70,000 persons. Most forms of sports are played in Nigeria. There are five important universities in this nation which give many people opportunities for higher learning. These universities are new and modern in every sense. The Ministry of Agriculture and Natural Resources has created many farm institutes to encourage better farming and to combat unemployment in the city. In its numerous teacher training colleges, Nigerian women are playing an increasingly important role. Queen's College is a secondary school for girls. King's College in Lagos is a secondary school for boys. The international school in Ibadan for high school boys and girls is a successful experiment in democracy and international relations. Hundreds of elementary schools are springing up everywhere. Some, particularly in major cities, are quite modern. The University of Lagos Teaching Hospital recognizes that expert medical care is very necessary for a healthy manpower supply. The major battle in Africa will be fought not only with education, but with syringes, needles, and drugs, rather than with guns, bullets, or other weapons. The task before the nation is not easy. Much political unrest continues throughout Africa. However, the hopes of Nigeria, Africa in miniature, are most high.